the education system from when they're very small, we get conditioned to go all the way up to, to um, senior school, then university, and then on to get a job, all based on the fact that the more education we have, the more power we'll have, the less we have to work so hard, and the more rewards we'll get from a system that looks after us. But here's what the big challenge is. The education system that we have is now a bit out of whack because you can work really hard and now you can Google anything. So you don't necessarily have to learn parrot fashion like you and I used to learn Ernesto. And also you can spend the rest of your life paying off debts. Now, why should you be in that situation? It's easier to control you from the very beginning. And it's hard to put your finger on who's to blame because it's just run like this for many, 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 many hundreds of years. Education was created to get the, the farmers into the factories. So it's created a system to see who can do their maths, who can do their English, the same kind of age, the same kind of um, ability. The best ones can go on. The worst ones just go back to the fields. And the system hasn't really altered that much since. Now, I know that you've got strong thoughts about education. And this is not, by the way, having a go at the educators. I really do feel for every teacher, every headmaster, every person that's out there, this is not having a go at you, but you've felt this as well. And we do in many businesses, the same as good policemen, turn around and say, well, you know, it's not all us. We're working as hard as we can to keep everybody safe. This is a thought that I've felt for a long time. You and I have talked about this many, many times, Ernesto. What are your thoughts yeah. on, on uh, education before we get um, Gary Vaynerchuk's thoughts? What do you think? I suffered uh, in my education. I mean, I am extremely an extremely right brain person and they actually made me be in a very left brain um, environment. I mean, I, I identified myself with death poet society and how important it is. And that's why uh, I decided to become a teacher. And I mean, my way of teaching has always been very unorthodox because I understand how you have to get to people's feelings. And uh, this is exactly what we have not had. And uh, right now, we are going through a reinvention of the educational system, not because it had to happen, but because, of course, we were forced into it. Um, and uh, we were mentioning on, on the previous episode about the moving finishing line. And this is another of those things which is actually creating a lot more of the anxiety. Because people said, well, you know, we're going to go 90 days maximum on this situation. Right now, we are over 100 seven or 108 days, whatever it is right now, and we're, we're going to continue. And uh, I, I believe that uh, even if the virus disappears, the world will never be the same again, because schools are going to be different. The way of teaching are going to be different, is going to be different. And whoever was teaching the way that they were teaching and the way that we have been affected uh, because of education, are going to have to change. So this is this is just uh, something that I am very passionate about, and I feel very bad about it because you're right. I mean, one of the things that is affecting us right now is the, the, the way that we were educated. Absolutely. So remember, this is all part of the conditioning to so ultimately show you why people are finding it so challenging and so helpless right now to deal with the pandemic. Now, we've already had some potty mouths on the show. We've got another potty mouth coming on, but he's a, an exceptionally smart one as well. Uh, Gary Ivanichek talking about the education system. Let's have a look at this. The school system here, I'm not, I'm not sure about America, but it's, it's outdated. Do it's you? outdated globally. It's outdated globally. The internet made it outdated because information is a commodity and the school system was built on me memorization of information. Mm. Why do I have to do any math? I have a calculator on my iPhone that can give you any math. Yeah. I don't need to know anything. I can ask Siri and Alexa in two seconds, they'll give me the answer. You know, who cares about the periodic table when I can tell you what, like it's just, it's so uncomfortably outdated globally because it's predicated on memorization of information in a world where we have information at our fingertip within a second for zero cost. The whole thing's dead. How do we fix it? Uh, it's the parents' responsibility. Mm. It's the parents' responsibility to not buy into the self-esteem wrapped up in your child going to a top university. We don't need to boil the ocean. Parents need to make sure their kids are happy. Mm. If, you just, if we all collectively actually gave a crap about the happiness of our children, it would fix itself. Unfortunately, we care more about the judgment of our contemporaries about what our children are accomplishing more than caring about our children. 
this is an issue of modern day parenting and insecurity and keeping up with the Joneses, mm. not a school system problem. Caring what other people think. Too. It is the devastation of our society. Yeah, because so many people watching this will be like, no, you need a university degree. You need to that to fall back on. What fall think? back on what? Yeah. Every company's not requiring a degree to get hired to, anyway. The greatest companies in the world, Amazon, Google, are no longer requiring degree anyway. Mm. So what are you falling back on? Now, you know, that's like saying you need to keep a horse on hand in case the car doesn't work. It's ludicrous. It is ludicrous. It is ludicrous. Yeah. And it's completely predicated on the framework that the parent grew up with and more importantly, the judgment that their parents are putting on them or how they want to keep up with everybody else. Because the people that they eat dinner with at the country club on Sunday night, their daughter's going to the big university and they want, it's just ludicrous. It is sad. I'm a byproduct of parents that were strong enough to not care about what other people thought, which is why I'm happy. And I would like to use what the gift my parents gave to me as something that I communicate to the world, hopefully inspiring one parent to give that gift to their child. Yeah, what do you say to that entrepreneur, that young entrepreneur at school, hating school, wanting to leave school, but has to stay at school? What do you say to them? Enjoy the vacation because you're going to work the rest of your life. Two, don't be a hypocrite. If you're such a tough guy or gal, stop taking mommy and daddy's money. If you're such an entrepreneur, go buy your own iPhone. Start practicing now. The quicker a child gets off a parent's payroll, the more likely they will be happy in life. I, I haven't seen this. Uh, I haven't seen this video, and I think it's uh, it's phenomenal. I mean, it is exactly as uh, as it is. I mean, it's it's like uh, yeah, we're gonna keep a we're gonna keep a horse just in case the car doesn't work. <laughs> but, it, but it's there, and again, I'm not blaming the educators, I'm not blaming the teachers, and everybody who's working really hard. But what we've got now is a really strange phenomenon. And I heard a phrase today that I'm going to share with you, Nesta, which explains what the economy is. It's a liquid economy now where literally everything's moving up and down, it's flowing, it's falling into bits and so on. We've never had this before. We had straight lines or at least with disruption. So you had to go over and find your own way. But literally it's all over the place. What's your thoughts? Yeah, my thoughts is the following. Coming back into what I was saying about conspiracy theories. And this is an important thing. Why is it that otherwise intelligent people believe in some really crazy stuff. Unfortunately, one of the challenges of the educational system is that they have imposed bullshit belief systems in our heads. And that's the whole thing. That's, for me, the thing that drives me absolutely crazy about the conditioning and about the... the I mean, you have been basically trained like a, a Pavlov's dog. And that's exactly what I have an issue with. I was actually going to show the video of the Pavlov's dogs today, but we'll save that maybe for fast forward. But you're absolutely right. I mean, uh, every school report I had said Dave is a disruptive influence. If only he would stop talking and behave, he might be able to get some better grades. Who cares? I get paid now to normally travel the world. I'm doing it online now. And I teach people how to be disruptive. And who do I teach? The top people in industries, ambassadors, millionaires billionaires success stories ceos they all want to get now to say how do i do this better how do i talk to people how can I be more effective that's the stuff i went to school and they tried to beat it out of me so let's get this down we're talking about the indoctrination of young people so from childhood right up until the age you're at now they've got to do things a certain way now what I want to do is we've already bashed education. I don't want to spend my time bashing education. That's not what I'm here for. I want to talk about the conditioning that leads to a problem where people feel helpless, lonely, and unable to deal with things. And what I want to do now is share something that Trevor Noah said on one of his brilliant monologues. He talked about the con he was talking about Black Lives Matter, and he was talking about the rioters. Because everyone says the rioters are terrible. We've got to sort them out. How dare they? They're doing everything. And he said, let me give you a different idea. We grow up with a contract from society. And that contract says, if we work really hard, we can get from nowhere up to here. The society is geared to give us the best potential to be able to do it. It will protect us and keep us all safe. And apart from the fact that you know there's some little biases here and there, 
anybody can get from where they are to where they need to be if they work really hard. What the society didn't say with the contract is that people enforcing it are going to be the ones that take you down and possibly kill you because of the color of your skin. Now, I'm not going to spend long on black lives at all. This is just what Trevor Noah was talking about in terms of the rioters. Let me put this in perspective. If your contract that says, I will behave and work my way up to be able to buy the, the bag or the car or the pair of shoes that I really want has been broken and you know you're not going to get it, what about the contract that says you should behave and respect distances and respect other people's boundaries and their material? I'm not saying you should commit crime, but this is at the heart of what that problem has been. And this is at the heart of the challenge that people are finding right now. They found themselves lost and alone. They were never told it was going to be like this. The contract said that the bosses would keep us safe and the politicians and everybody else would have an idea about what we had to do next. And clearly, that's not the case. Thanks for watching the show. We hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you watch all the videos over here. There's two choices for you. Or, of course, uh, I'm Dave Crane coming from Dubai. And this is Ernesto Verdugo coming from Houston. And I think we should send a message. Hold on. Uh, what is this? Subscribe.